Almighty God, we give thanks this day because you are our Heavenly Father. And it is today that we come and hallow your name and honor you in our worship to you. And we ask you as the great physician to touch the lives of all of those that have now contracted this horrible enemy that has come upon us. Be with the President and the First Lady, be with every one of our governmental employees that have contracted it, be with all of those that, even though they're not touched by the, the government, they're touched by Corona. It's a tough enemy, and we need your strength and your power and your glory to walk us through this valley of the virus. And so be with us now as we put our hearts and minds together and worship you this day. Amen. Amen. You notice on your bulletin, there's a couple of different things. I may have given you more than you really want to know. <laughs> uh, you'll have your outline there, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then on the back, I have you some communion thoughts. So if you don't want to hear me preach and want to do something else, you can read the communion thoughts on the back while we're doing all of that this day. So. Uh, now, and by the way, some of you have signed the, lead, uh, the charge conference forms that we need to have signed. If you haven't signed any of those that need to be, get with uh, Brenda as soon as worship is over because we've got to turn those in to the district so that we will be having our charge conference on Sunday, November the 8th here. Um, I say here, it may wind up being done by Zoom, I don't know. I have four charge conferences to do for four other churches. Uh, I wanted to try to do them by Zoom, but one of them doesn't have the facilities, so I will do that one in person. I may wind up doing all four of them in person, and that's okay. As long as we wear our masks, as long as we keep ourselves social distances, as long as we wash our hands and move forward from here, we can overcome all of this. So today, let your hearts and minds be glad be cheerful this day. Give thanks to God for where you are, health-wise, in the midst of all of this. And now let us be in the spirit of worship. standing at our opening hymn is number 622. <laughs>
think of all sorts of things and think about people and pray about my blessings and the people that I come in contact with. And it just brought to my mind the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And I wanted to just use that as my prayer today. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me show love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born to eternal life. Today, let our lives be a prayer. Let us be so close to you that you become a part of our every conversation. Let us be open to your presence so that we sense your power at work in the world you created. Let us be so filled with your love it flows out to others. Today, Lord, today, let our lives be a prayer. Please be with all of those on our prayer list. As we join our hearts and hands to say the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord's words to us for today come from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason I fall on my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its true name. I ask God from the wealth of his glory to give you power through his Spirit to be strong in your inner selves. And I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love, so that you, together with all God's people, may have the power to understand how broad and long, how high and deep is Christ's love. Yes, may you come to know his love, although it can never be fully known, and so be completely filled with the very nature of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know you probably have thoughts as to why I chose for us to venture into 40 days of prayer. And a thing came to me, you've seen me write a little bit lately on Dr. Barner's surveys that he has been producing from Arizona Christian University about what's going on in the life of America today. And here's one of the reasons I chose for us to venture into 40 days of prayer. By the way, uh, we're starting our fourth week in the study on Wednesday, so we come away and it's a lot of fun and gives us a lot of information. But Dr. Barner's survey has shown something that frightens us to no end. We need to be in prayer over what transpired. In his survey, you won't believe this, but a majority of Americans no longer subscribe to the historic understanding of truth. They have ventured out in a new way. Out of his survey, six out of 10 Americans today identify moral truth is up to each individual. And there is no 
moral absolutes that apply to every person all the time. When you think of that and you wonder about, wow, what's going on in our world today in this post-modernism uh, that we're in? Well, I want you to think, let it sink into your mind just for a moment that six out of 10 Americans think that they make up their own moral truth. Now that sort of makes me think maybe the Ten Commandments are maybe the Ten Suggestions. Uh, no longer is it uh, honor your father and your mother, no longer do, you know, do, you, do you not lie, do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery, as mere suggestions to us. And I ought to have another thought in that. Does that mean that some people today might be perfectly entitled to believe that thief and murder and rape and uh, things along those lines is personal truth, but you can do it if you wish. So that's one of the reasons. I wanted us to think about our inner certainty in our lives, and so I was thinking along these lines, and that's one of the reasons I have suggested for us to do this 40 days of prayer, because there's something that we keep forgetting at times, of what our forefathers brought forth to us, and it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, they, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, deriving their powers from the consent of the government, and that the, the government becomes destructive at this at its end if it doesn't do these things. So I got us to wondering about, let us pray in the fifth dimension. So what is the fifth dimension? How many of you remember the fifth dimension? You remember Aquarius? You heard that song, right? Isn't that group called the fifth dimension? Well, fifth dimension really and truly is a mathematical situation in life that you and I may know about if you were in mathematics as I was, and in calculus along those lines, as our daughter is today and still teaching that. But I got to thinking about the fifth dimension. When you heard Fred a while ago, it said by the width and the depth and the height of what God was doing, because that was four sides of the thing, right? And what we're looking here today, if you'll take out your outline that I have there for you, and we'll look at this today. It is full, I'm not gonna go through all of that because we, it's left up to you to do some deciphering for yourself. But as you take that out, thinking about this fifth dimension, uh, that is, as I said, a mathematical and physics uh, thing it's all about. It's height and depth, width and breadth, depth, the fourth dimension, and the a lot of controversy is over the fact of the fifth dimension, and it's not directly observable. It's like God's little, remember me talking a few years back about the little, about God's particle that they have found with the larger Hadron uh, converter that we have? But the fifth dimension is directly uh, observable in a, in a lot of, and not observable in a lot of ways. But and we think about it as not having a full relation in our lives. But I would like to pull out some different kinds of directions today. So in this 40 days that we're looking, and today we're looking at five dimensions of prayer, and I have them listed there on your outline for you. Uh, uh, it's part of the, we're going to say we're in the fourth part of the day. 40 days of prayer service and uh, sermons and we are also the Bible study. Uh, and so I want us to wrap our minds around if we possibly can and our hearts as well about being involved with truth and being involved with how to pray and praying in the fifth dimension and, uh, and praying in the five different dimensions that God has thrown out to us and sent there. So before uh, we get there though, I need us to understand a couple of more important and really important things that I've listed on the left side of your page there before I got to the five dimensions. I wanted to throw those there and let us look at them, but then remind us of things. I placed them there. Uh, number one that I placed over there is something that I want us to all get wrap our minds and our hearts around is God is multidimensional. He's a multidimensional God uh, and he's not one, he's not two, He's not three. Now we think of three in the Trinity and we'll talk about that. But looking at this, it's almost like you and me putting on our 3D glasses 
and watching a 3D movie where you get to see all the dimensions that's going on there. And that's where we are. So our God is a multi-dimensional God. Uh, and the most important thing about prayer for you and me is to understand that our prayers can be fulfilling and can be fruitful in our lives. And when these 40 days are finished, uh, I hope, and my prayer is that we will know more about prayer and we will become more knowledgeable about God because this is a lot of depth in this and our understanding God and his dimensionalism that he's there. He's in five dimensions as we think about. But what do I mean by that when I bring that out to us today as well? It means to me, and I hope it does for you, that God is not just one dimensional, right? That is, an, if you and I can see, I wrote onto that thing being multidimensional, we see that this is, you, this is God's creation that we're in. I don't know how many of you are, but I remember Joy and I used to go on, we would take a bunch of our friends in church and we would go and spend the weekend at Lake Darkdale or somewhere camped out across the state of Arkansas. But every Sunday morning, we would always have, have a group and we would serve and, and have worship in our campsite, you know. But the fact being is, I have loved to hunt. I love to fish. I love to be out there. I remember being on the mountain in Colorado and watching a big buck go by me and deciding, boy, you're beautiful. And if I shoot you, I got to climb down in there and get you up and out of there. I'm going to take a picture and let you ease right on by. You get to see God's creation. And that's one of the things about nature. You and I are out in it and we can see it. A lot of times, we see all the beauty of Arkansas, all right? But we don't really see it. We drive right by it. We don't see what's there. Uh, and, and we don't get the sense to see it, all the, the areas and some of the lakes and the nice cliffs and, and all the rocks around it and some of the mountains that are out there. We don't see it. Those leaves are starting slowly to turn and I, I pray we all get out and, and worship God as we look at the leaves turning. But we're there, you know, we learn a lot about God just by looking at nature when we see it. Joy and I love to watch. We were sitting out on the swing yesterday watching all of the birds come in and out, the, the, bird, the bird baths and around the fountains and the squirrels doing their thing and the rabbit running by. And that's when you look at that and you think, wow, all right? And you see the flowers blooming and you see the, the, the spider lilies have all come up. And it was so funny, but we had spider lilies that started out with a little thing of them, right? So I got it from her mother's home back down where she was from. Guess what? We now have spider lilies that run at least 25 to 30 feet down this wall. And all of a sudden, there's a big blackjack oak there. And guess what? On the other side of the blackjack oak, there are spider lilies coming up and blooming. And I said to Joy, how did they get there? Well, let me tell you, nature does that. I was getting in my truck going over to Home Depot the other day and I noticed a squirrel running down that bed where those, the, those spider lilies are and guess what, he came out behind the spider lilies with one of the bulbs in his mouth <laughs> and he scooted out across the yard and we watched him and then he went up behind those blackjack oaks and I presume he buried it back there so next year we're going to have a spider lily back there. You see, we can look at nature and realize and worship God and see God in the midst of it, all of it and seeing his creativity, but we also see his diversity in all of it. None of, look around you, are any of us look alike? Look at the diversity here that's involved with God. And so we learn a lot about God just in nature. And it takes more than, than faith. With me now, it takes more faith not to believe in God than to believe in God. Did you know that? It takes harder at it. We, have, we find people working harder and having more faith to not believe in God. So we know that God is a multidimensional God and because of his creation uh, shows us the complexity of what God created. When you look at it, I remember in my graduate work in embryology and watching some of the things that I thought, well, I thought I knew it all and then I realized God is so much smarter and so big a creator than I ever was. I thought I had created life in that test tube or in that chicken egg, but I hadn't. I had only done what God had created. You see, Jesus, and the next point is Jesus, see, we see in, in we see all of this in Jesus. We see all of this marvelousness of God's creativity. Think about the incarnation of it. You know what incarnation means, right? 
It means that God became flesh. He wanted to communicate with you and me as humans, and to do that, he had to become one of us. And so we have Christ in our lives today. The other point is that we see it in how the Holy Spirit moves in our lives, and you wonder about that at times. I've had people say to me this week some things I cannot understand. The president said, I'm where I am today because of the miracles of God. I thought that was great and interesting to think about. Well, you and I are where we are because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. The Trinity is within us. We're there. We have within us the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it's not just a, a revelation to us, but we understand it uh, that it is such thing that that second point I put there for you is we understand God is multidimensional. And one of these things is, I want us to understand, you and I will never, ever be alone. That's the marvelous thing that we're finding out in this 40 days of prayer as we look at this. He is in every dimension at the same time. He's in all of them. And he's in the past, he's in the present, he's in the future, here and there, in heaven, on earth. Uh, and the spirit of the world, he's in all of these, in all the dimensions of it. And he is yours, he's in your world and he's in my world. Of course, we don't always recognize him as being there unless we stop and think on it and say, yes, Lord, I realize you are here. And that's what we have to get to. Every dimension, all the time in our lives, God is in it. He's in us, he's above us. He's around us. He's a one multi-dimensional God. So, and for a few moments, let's get practical. And I gave you the steps on the, on the right page, side of the page, is this. And you and I will actually practice them in communion today. And that's why you have communion note uh, thoughts written on there for you today, because it all sort of blends to be together. The first dimension is look backwards to the cross. In other words, that's where we do look. We look back to it. Uh, and, and, and not start with our problems. In other words, one of the things we're learning in study on, on Wednesdays about prayer is we have to honor God before we even get to any point that we're wanting to bring our problems for. So don't start our prayers with our problems. Ask for God, and, you know, but with gratitude of how deeply God loves us. When we understand that, we understand prayer. And how costly evil is to us and the sin and in, in, in evil and the sin there and how completely you and I are forgiven of that. If God can forgive David, guess what? You and I, I don't have any worry. We're going to be forgiven because that's what God is about. He wants to be there. And if you look there on your page uh, under that first point that I have to put down 1 Peter, the first chapter, the 18 verses, and when he talks about us, we have been ransomed. How did you get ransomed? You got ransomed because Christ went to the cross. That's the ransom that got paid for us. And so we have it. So how much and how much are you and I worth? When you think about when somebody ransomed it, what are you worth? Like when they get kidnappings and these people send the ransom notes and say, this, we want this much money. What would be in your mind? How much are you rent with God ransom for you? Well, he gave us a lot. That's the greatest one I can imagine. Think about it. He did what? You and I could not do for ourselves. He ransomed us from our sins. And the second dimension there, it says, look upward into our Father's loving face. How many times do you ever look up into God's face? I, I, you know, I look at it all the times when we pray, we always bow our heads to pray. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I'm out in the yard or I'm out in the woods or I'm, out, but I'm looking up at God and I'm praying to God. I want to see his face. And guess where I see his face? I see it right here. I see it in all of your faces. And that's what we need to be looking for. Do we see God in all the faces that we see? The way we see God will control our lives. That's how, that's important for us to think, to think about this. And then they control our lives more than any other thing in our lives. How we think of God and see God's will. So what you and I call God sets the tone of our prayers. In other words, when our prayers and our tone of our prayers is set by God in how we look at God and understand what God is in our lives today. Romans passage I printed there, it gives us three important points about it. 
what we need to learn and memorize and never forget. Those are things listed there on your on your outline. And those God and our prayers, I gave you three ways of looking at that. We want our prayers to be personal. That's why we call him Abba. We call him Daddy. We call him Father. That's personal. We get close to that way. And we, we're, we're passionate. How many times have you just cried out, Oh God, help me. You know, we've been there. And that's that becomes passionate. And then there's that partnership that I have listed there. And that deals with us partnering with the Holy Spirit that's indwelling in us. And it's where we are thinking along those lines. And then that third dimension, uh, looking look inward to Jesus living inside of each of us. Do you realize he's there? When we, when you and I became Christians, when we gave our life to Christ, when we stepped across the line and were baptized in the faith, God put his spirit in us. That's what happens to us in baptism. That's what, when we go to be baptized, we get that spirit put within us. And the Trinity is placed inside of us in that moment. And we realize that I wrote across there for you uh, a thing that you may want to look at. It's down under point three. Is the cross there. This can be our prayer. Jesus, produce the fruit of your spirit in me today. In other words, we all know about Galatians 5.23. We know about the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. And that, that be part. What we're asking for is that fruit of the Spirit be in us this day. And that's where we are when we look at it. The fourth dimension I threw there for us to think about is look around and ask the Holy Spirit to use us. Have you ever asked God to use you? The most dangerous prayer that you and I can pray is just two words. Use me. That's dangerous. That grabs at us. It says things to us in our life. But if, instead of criticizing the world, when we ask God to use us, uh, or complaining about the world, or judging the world, you see, that doesn't work. Or whining about the world. You ever whine about it? Are blogging about it? What's wrong with this world? And I, I see all this. I, I get tired of Facebook. Do you? My phone dings when I've had a new hit on Facebook. And what? I don't want to read some of them when I see them. It's the most depressing thing to go. But I want us to think about it. I want this to be us and be our prayer. Holy Spirit, show me what's wrong and show me how. I can make a difference. Use me. And that's what this is about. That's what Jesus came about. That's what God is saying to us and putting the Holy Spirit in is use us. And so I, I dare you to pray that prayer. Uh, and, and, and that's the fourth dimension of the prayer. That's that part where you and I have not really given it a lot of thought. But we're called to do as Romans 16, 13, 6, 13, I put there for you, is instructs us to do, uh, and there under the fourth item, is that give yourself completely to God. That's tough, isn't it? I mean, give up every part of you to God. I would love to give him up some more part of me, all right? But you know what he said when I said that? He says, in my time. I said yes in your time. See, that's what we're about is God use me and show me where I want to be and I'm going to say, God, I want to do this and God says, in my time. And that's what we have to grasp it around our minds around it and think about it. So when you and I look at that fifth dimension, that's that dimension that in math that we never see but we know it's there. Let's look forward to the future how far in, in faith let our future be in faith I don't know how you are in the midst of this valley of the virus that we've been going through but my one prayer and my one faith is God is going to take us through this and bring us out on the other side he's going to give us a pathway to walk it's sort of like the old joke about all the things that 
they were saying, when the guy got up and says, I got to go over here, and the guy said, what are you going to do? So I'm just going to walk over there, and he was going to come up in the duck line, and he got up and he walked across the water and went over where he had to go and do his thing. And he came back, and the guy said, how'd you do that? And he said, you got to know where the stones are. <laughs> and so that's where we are. That's what God is saying to you and me. Do you know where the stones are? Do you know where to step? Do you know how to walk in this fifth dimension that it's there? And so God wants to hear where we are. We, we want us to look within ourselves. We want us to look forward and all around ourselves and look up more than anything else is look up and see God in our love. You see, God wants to hear our plans. How many times do you know, I don't want to talk to God about my plan. One of the things that I love about this book that we're doing in the 40 days of prayer, it, it asks you all these things that come out in the back. And I don't know how you are, but I want to cover mine up and not let anybody see what I'm writing, what my plans are. And God says, open the book. And I said, yes, Lord. That's our plans. What are, open them up. Show them to God. Hold them up and be a part of it. Uh, what's our ideas? What's going to happen in our lives today? What's our, and, and what's our dreams? Where we are in our lives? And somebody says, well, Bob, look at your age. I said, I can still dream. You know, I mean, I'm not gone from here yet. And I'm not through here yet. And so I can still dream and throw those dreams out. And God can help me with them or tell me not in this, in this time. But, you know, think about it. How many of you read self-help books? I've read self-help books from all around. When I was in the sales world, we had to be involved with that. And I've been to every Zig Ziglar type of, of production. I've been all of these realms and, and all of and Napoleon and all of them. We're listening to where we're going and being in all of these great suggestions. But the one thing that they all bring out something for us that says what's one thing. You and I need a mastermind council. Did you know that? Every one of them, when you get to the bottom line, it means who's your counselor? What is your mastermind counsel in your life? And what better than you know? I got to thinking, that's not a, bad, not a bad idea. Can you imagine the Trinity being your mastermind counsel that's going to be involved in your life with you? Well, you know, see, what God is wired us. You know, He created us. And He's in the midst of all our DNA. You didn't realize that, did you? He left a little bit of His DNA in all of us. And he has made us. And he wants us to accomplish things in our life. And what he wants us to be in life, you and I are already wired for it. If you ever know the story, I'm not wired for that. Or you don't, or you're not uh, to the level of what they told me one time in the service, you don't have a high enough clearance for that information, Marvel. <laughs> but you see, we're wired for it. God says, go for it in our life. And Philippians First chapter six verses, I'm confident of this, the God who began a good work in you will continue to complete it. And look what it says, until it's finished on the day of Jesus Christ. That's the wonderful thing. So God has given us the tools to remember these five dimensions. And guess what that is? It's called the Lord's Supper. If you will look on the back of your, middle of your program back there, I've given you some thoughts. So now let us be in prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks this day. Thank you for directing us in our prayer life. Thank you for blessing us each day. Thank you for walking with us and showing us the steps and the right path and the directions to carry us through. And we ask you now, as we create in our hearts and our minds the love for you that we will now share and do as you have taught us to do, to remember you in everything we do. And we're going to do it this day. Bless the elements as we do.
ushers will be coming in front of you and they will be offering you one of our little cups and I'm going to show you right quick how you will do it. We'll all take it together at the same time. And when you receive one of these, turn it up and take the top off of this and when the juice is down, and there's the bread. And we will take the bread at that time. And then you will turn it over and turn, take the top off and take the wine that's there for the juice. So we'll be doing that today. But now that night, when Christ was betrayed, he did something that he's challenged all of us to do for every day in remembrance. And he broke the bread. And in breaking the bread, he said things to his disciples that was really rather shocking to them. And it is to us. It's hard for us to grasp our minds around it. It's in that fifth dimension that we have trouble grasping. And he says, this is the body broken for you for remission of sins. Eat it as often as you will in remembrance of what has been done for you. We've been ransomed. And he offered it up to God that evening, and we do this morning, and we say, Almighty God, bless the bread and the partaking of this bread, that it will give to us the inspiration to activate the Holy Spirit within us and do the things you require of us to do. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And then he took the cup, and when he filled the cup, he offered it up and said, this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for remission of sins and the gift of eternal life. This is a ransom. And he lifted it up in the midst of their wide-eyed concern and said, Father, this is the blood of my body which is shed for many for the ransom of all the souls. Bless them. Not my will, but yours. And God blessed it. And we bless it this day. Father, we give thanks for the ransom that your Son has done for us as we partake of this holy supper. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I ask the ushers to come. They're going to come and serve part of you and part of the others. And so uh, they'll walk in front of you and they will hand it out to you. They will be socially distanced and they will be masked and they will be wearing gloves. And take them all at one time. And once everybody has them, then we will do communion. can have some juice and a piece of bread and join us in the communion this day. body of Christ which is broken for you for remission of sins eat and give thanks and remember in his name we pray
And likewise, turn it over and remove the top carefully. It folds up easily. Those at home and those here, now lift the chalice and partake of the juice. This is the blood of Christ, which was shed for you for remission of sins and the gift of eternal life. Drink, be excited, and give thanks. In his name we pray. You may hand your used chalices to the ushers or you may drop them in the trash on your way out. Let us now be in song, right? Let us sing. Let's stand and let's sing Love Lifted Me. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and may his peace go with you.